<laughs> and, and now that I'm okay being by myself, I'm not going to be in a situation that disturbs my peace. Talk or, about it. Or poisons my peace. I don't care how, how, how great loving is. I don't care how beautiful somebody is or what their measurements are. I'd rather keep my peace and, and sleep Preach. on the whole bed, diagonal if I need to. Preach. Christian, uh, before we move to Lady J, I want you to explain why is peace so important? I am on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a, a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your, your letter, I cried. I just got married two months ago and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield and this is season four. These dating streets on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera Star Whitfield. Listen, I am so excited to bring you this special episode. Man, but before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, make a commitment and hit that subscription button. Listen, we're on the road to get 100,000 subscribers and we need all of you to do your part so we can reach that goal. Let's hit that goal by beginning of next month. Come on, we can be ambitious. This episode is our first episode in front of a live audience. Y'all give it up for the live audience. Where y'all at? So you know we finna act up. I got my buddies here, so we finna act up. So listen, we're gonna have fun. This episode is all about self-love. I always say just because you're single doesn't mean you have to be alone. And so that's what this episode is about, tapping into self-love. So listen, without further ado, y'all give it up for our panelists. Man, I am so excited to bring to you this episode. We're gonna start with my buddy, Jessica Reedy. Give it up for Jessica Reedy, y'all. Christian Keys, Lady Jade, Gil Cuero, and Samantha Lee. So we're gonna have fun. Listen, I thank y'all so much for coming out. Um, I wanted y'all specifically for this episode because we're gonna have fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. So um, I'm gonna go down the line. And I want y'all to take some thought about this. When you hear the phrase or the two words self-love and you apply it to yourself, what comes to mind? Jessica, what comes to mind when you hear the word self-love? I mean, for me, it's worth knowing that I'm, I'm worth more than I gave myself credit for. You know, it's unlearning bad habits, bad thoughts, and pressing myself to excel with every negative thought, thinking 20 positives. Self-love is like a, it's an internal thing for me. It's not something where I'm external. Because I feel like when I, when I tend to my inside, it exudes off of me. Like it's like it, it comes off of me. You ever see somebody that drink a lot? And um, you know, no matter how much you shower, the next day you still smell like alcohol. <laughs> She's you not know, referring to I me. am not referring to this man, right? And so it's the same. <laughs> I had liked you right up until this point. No, That's how I was start talking about off. you. I was not talking about you, Christian. Fix, you know, fix I would it, Jesus. I would never talk about you like that. No, I would never. I, would I never. can see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but what I feed myself, it comes out. You can always tell when somebody's around and they think negative. No matter how much they smile, something about them is ugh. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm very attentive to what I feed myself. That's my self-love. Good, good, good. I know it, I know it. She went in. I want a little phrase, but she, she preached. All right, sorry, LaTerry. No, I'm talking about Gil said you done intimidated him. He said, how you gonna follow up after you done said all that? Yeah. yeah, you, you saw all, all of our answers. So I'm I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. You got on red bottom. You can think of something. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I think, I, 
as he sticks that foot up. He said, come, <laughs> come on, now. Come on That's on what he now. did, Christian. That's what he did. <laughs> Christian, when you hear the phrase self-love, what do you think about it, as it applies to you personally? Um, I, I love what you said, most of what you said. <laughs> um, I, I agree completely. Um, I think that it allows you to be confident in the things that you're passionate about. You can tell sometimes when people don't love themselves because there's an arrogant air, and the arrogance is a forced confidence because there's a great chance that they don't love themselves. And a lot of us, you know, I hate to say it, some folk don't even like themselves. Yeah. Um, and I think self-love allows, allows me to respect everybody and treat everybody like the CEO. It allows me to make time for everybody and make sure that they feel like they are the only person in the room or they are important. They matter. Um, it allows me to forgive myself for mistakes made, to address and hold myself accountable, because that's another part of love. That's one of the tougher parts. You've got to hold yourself accountable. You know if you if you BSing, like, hey, come on, man, you do better. OK, OK, you're right. And you, you, you start to fix it. You aggressively address the things that you know you can do better at. To me, all of those are parts of self-love as well. Um, and, and those are some of my <clears throat> favorite. <laughs> I just want one phrase. I want to just one phrase. And we're going to unpack it throughout the episode. You didn't say we had a time limit. Well, I just wanted a phrase. I want when you say self-love, you say one little phrase. Well, tell, tell, me, tell me we had 15 seconds and I would have wrapped it up. <laughs> That's, that's, I'm gonna stop there, cause, yeah, um, yeah, Jade, come on, my bad. Ain't nothing left. <laughs> it's a lot left, cause you love yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I really agree with you, Christian. Uh, I'm gonna make mine really short and quick. I believe that self-love is when you know who you are and whose you are, then you can love you because you know who lives inside of you. And when you know who lives inside of you, that's going to shine outwardly. Good. Drop the mic 10 there seconds. Is. Boom. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. Good, good. You can tell yeah. I go to white funerals sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they ain't finna get them long. Yeah. Oh Gil, when you think of self-love and you think about yourself, self-love, speak as so me. So for me, I would say um, just being unapologetically myself. Understanding that, you know, we, I have insecurities, but not allowing those to control my day to day life. Mm -hmm. And then just being able to show that self love, to show my love to others by my confidence and, you know, allowing, allowing yourself to also be vulnerable mm -hmm. without, you know, being afraid to be judged by others. That's all That's I got. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Sam, self-love. Um, so the only thing I could think of was me, my journey to loving myself really became something where I didn't need somebody else to love me for me to love me. Mm -hmm. So whether that person texts me, call me, want me, don't want me, I don't care, I love me. And so um, that's what I think self-love is, is just falling in love with yourself so that if, whenever you're, we would talk, lady, Jade and I was talking about this earlier. Talking about love your neighbor as yourself. But if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. And some of y'all so focus on getting a neighbor. But you need to be focusing on loving yourself. All right, then. All right. Miracle Monday has entered the building. In the building. In the building. <laughs> Y'all hear me talk about this a lot on my podcast. Um, I didn't even know I didn't love myself to the extent that I should have uh, until I took a vow of abstinence. Um, and so abstinence to me means self-love to me because I would haphazardly, recklessly give my body uh, to different women. And I said, you know what, God? I didn't realize that I had value. I didn't even think that that was attached to my value system. And so when I got into, you know, when I got married, you know, I treated that casually and not realizing that self-love meant for me to be disciplined uh, and loving myself to the highest level. So that's what self-love means to me. So listen, so as y'all, um, first of all, I wanna, I wanna talk about this because uh, we spoke about this earlier about events. When you have, um, and I'm gonna ask the men and women, y'all wanna chime in, you can chime in. 
why isn't it, why don't men go to self-love events? Why, why wouldn't a man go to that? Gil, Christian, why? Go ahead, Gil, set it off. <laughs> Allegedly, I talked too long the first time. I feel some kind of way. No, you good. You can talk real long right now. Allegedly. <laughs> That's a tough one. But so if I'm speaking on behalf of the men that I know, um, honestly, it just comes down that they just too cheap. <laughs> they, they like, what, I mean, what's the point? Why am, I, why am I gonna spend all this money if I can just go to the club for like five or ten dollars and you know meet whoever? So that's like the truth to it. That's real, um, especially from the guys I know, because yeah. they they not about to spend a penny for for something like this. That's good, Christian. I gotta follow that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I can't make an excuse for it. I just know that. If there are guys that are actually looking to meet people, I think they're missing out yeah. on an event like this that's this classy, this melanated, um, this potentially magic. Um, I think it's a mistake. I would, you know, as a single man, if I wasn't up here and I was in the city and you, you told me about it, I'd pull yeah. up. I'd yeah. throw some, you know, some fly on and I'd come on through here. Just, why? Why? Why would you come? One, I know you're not going to throw an event that misses. Good talk. And then two, um, I mean, it's, it's if I'm looking in the market for amazing melanated women. <laughs> Here they go. <laughs> Jay. Can I ask a question? I want to ask Gil a question because that was a good point about men being cheap and not wanting to spend the money. Or does it depend on who is being advertised, right? Because if you have a group of women that are being advertised, because really... Come on now, guys go to the, you know, they'll look at the flyer and be like, oh, okay, I know what type of event this is going to be. Maybe were the women, should they have been pictured with a little less clothing, would men have paid the money to come? If we're keeping it real. Yeah, true. Okay, so I did say it's men being cheap. It's not that they cheap. They just rather not spend their money on that. They, they might, they have the money. They just rather not But that's not what I'm saying. It. What is so that? So yeah. I feel like, yes. Probably that would appease them a bit more. Um, but then again, we're talking about a whole different type of event. You know, we're not talking about a soiree. You know, we're talking about... But I guess that's my question. is like, why would men prefer to go... Men will go throw $1,000 in a club, but you won't yeah. spend $250 to come in here and do something classy and just yeah. probably mix and mingle, get you some food, some drinks. That's what I'm saying. Like, the comparison of you'll spend way more money out there tricking it off Yep. Can I say that on your podcast? You sure can. Okay. okay. <laughs> but instead of coming to something like this, that is what I don't understand about men. Instead of doing the math and understanding that there is going to be a bunch of amazing looking black women here, as a man, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, the women going to be there. <laughs> if I'm looking to meet people and mingle and maybe meet somebody to, you know, to, to grab lunch with, grab dinner with, connect with, I'm going. It makes sense. To me, one plus one is two, water is wet, the sky is blue. I'm pulling up, because it makes sense. It's going to be a classy event with a bunch of, of nicely dressed professional women. Yes. Sign me up. Yes. But the thing about it is most men, their priorities, right? Most men want it easy. You know, this is classy women. This is going to take some time. This, you need to get to know them. You're not going to take them home that same night. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so, so is it really come down to what is it that you want? And so men, men, like you said, most men will they they will freely trick off some thousand dollars because they know they can probably get some little chicken head to go that night yeah. or whatever back to the hotel, or whatever, and go from there. So young lady, young lady. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think that it just comes down to priorities and and what type of people you attract. Because I've been to um, I've been to singles uh, networking events where they are like classy people and stuff like that, but it just depends on how it's advertised. Um, or the ones I've been to is it's free, right? So there go again, men aren't <laughs> trying to pay for something if they can just go to the club. And so it goes back to like money. For men, it's all about money. <laughs> is it worth my money to go there? That's all it is for men. Sam, you was about to say something. What were you about to say? Mm. Come on. 
They're going to keep in your spirit. No, let it come out. Let it flow. Let it fly. Yeah. Go ahead, talk. So it, what it sounds like is that a man needs <clears throat> like to know some, there's going to be some guarantee. I, I, what comes to mind at first for me was that I feel like when you're, when you go to an event like this, I think Gil hit it on the head. It's like you're looking for a certain kind of woman. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what it's like in Texas. I know it's like in Atlanta. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's, you, you're, is a certain market of women that are in this room. Y'all are all elegant, opulent, beautiful women. You know, y'all are not going to let certain things fly. Y'all are going to call them on their stuff. Y'all going to call, you're going to be a different kind of woman. And a, there might be men that not, may not, listen, am I going to pay to be around these kind of women? You know, am I really ready for my wife? Mm. Not sure. Mm. Am I looking for a good time right now while I'm in the city? Yeah. I could get that for free down the street. So it's like, I think it really goes down to what they're looking for. And if we were less dressed, if, you decide to put a picture of me up. <laughs> you be you. I think that would be falling short because then you would bring bringing the wrong kind of men. Talk about it. That ain't necessarily looking for what y'all ladies are looking for. So I I think that as well, and I also think that I think that you know if you're gonna pay two hundred fifty dollars, you're like, what kind of guarantee am I gonna get? Am I going to take somebody home tonight? That's 250 I mean, I could go on a date. <laughs> Might get a little closer. You know? <laughs> and what's crazy about you bringing up that 250 y'all, I'm sorry, y'all know I talk a lot, right? Is that guys do, I'm not saying these two, and y'all can speak on it, but I have known guys that equivalent <laughs> what is going to happen at the end of the night according 100%. to how much they spent, which is pure madness to me. I'm like, you took me to dinner. Like, we're talking dinner, you guys. Like, I, I, but I've literally heard men say, because I mean, I'm around a lot of guys. I've heard men say, if I spend $150 on a girl, shoot, yeah, she coming home with me. $150? Girl. <laughs> literally. You have to up that. <laughs> exactly, but that's my whole point is like, why, why would it even be a dollar amount, period? Like, fellas? It shouldn't be the entitlement. I don't have that issue, so I'm not going to, I'm not going, and we got to, no, no, I don't, mean, I don't mean it like that. I mean, I'm not going to go out and be like, okay, you know, we went to this steakhouse, and, and we did that, and, you know, we bought that, and you ordered that, and your side dishes, and your, and the dessert, and the creme brulee. He ordered to add it that. up. He added you know, it up. You had Adding creme brulee. I want, I want creme brulee. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, you do for your person the way you want to do for your person. Um, if I'm in a relationship and my woman takes me to dinner, she's dessert. Um, yeah. Talk about it. Another standing ovation and the crowd goes crazy. But, I felt a spirit. She's entitled to Across the room. I, I feel like I she's did. entitled. I feel like she's entitled. Because we, on the other side of that, of we course. never get asked, hey, let me get it. Even if I don't allow it. Just pretend to ask. <laughs> Facts. Just Man. pump fake. Euros. Yeah. Euros you can pump fake? Because yeah. you know you're not going to. Hey, baby, let me get. No, it. I got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. But it does feel good. <laughs> it's two sides of every story. Up, girl, you said the woman's like, well, I've actually been out with a guy before. He let me take the bill. I was like, now hold up now. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going to block his blessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna stop you. Yeah, you don't know how God gonna bless you. Hold on, you don't uh, know what his account look like in that moment. Somebody real quiet over here. You, uh, we, I'd love to hear your take on this. Go ahead, as, Jessica. As long as it don't have to do with me again. Sorry about that. I, well, <laughs> go ahead, friend. I feel like, <laughs> I mean, everybody spoke the truth about the value of a woman. It is a, a certain standard when you put a higher price on a ticket. Um, I think that's the same with college. If mm. if you, you expect to get what you pay for. And so I think it's a compliment, but also an insult that men are being cheap, um, that you're settling for what's less than that will eventually destroy you. Uh, but, you know, as for Jessica, uh, when it comes to the bill, I don't mind having alligator arms. I go ahead and be like, I got it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Hey, you want me to get it? You know, <laughs> I'm fake. Hey, I don't mind if that's what it takes, right? Hey, I, I, I'll tuck my arm in and say, no, I can get the bill. Hold on. <laughs> I don't mind if that, 
the ego stroke it, the, okay? No, no. The, the thoughtfulness of it, I think, is is important. Occasionally, I agree. Now, if, if I do if I do twenty dates in a row with my person, with my woman, my absolutely. exclusive. I I agree. I don't hate the idea of a surprise. Hey, baby, you always this, that, and the other. I agree. L let me, may I, can I? Hell I yeah. Agree. Thank you. <laughs> now, wait. But I, I can get with that, Christian. I think that that does make yeah. sense. You're right. But in defense, You're right. in defense I am good. personally, I'm just a romantic, period. I love hard. So I'm, I am the person that sets it up, which is to my default, because for whatever reason, no matter how hot a ticket is, I still get straddlers. I don't know what I give off. You know how you walking around, like, why are you... I don't be wanting to say this. I think this is about to sound arrogant, but I'm not. Can y'all tell? And so, look, but no, I feel like the guy that I would want to talk to me doesn't. Yeah. It'd be the one I'd be like, why are you? <laughs> How you get brave like this? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but why are you brave? Like, tell me, what happened? What's going on in your mind? <laughs> That's like making you what think. What happened in your mind? Yeah, it's like, why you think we got a chance? T talk to me. Like, Put me in your mindset. But then, but then look, watch this. The fine dude got me feeling ugly. I'm like, hey, what's wrong with you? You know I'm fine. You know? <laughs> Is it just me? I'll be like, what happened? Like, you got eyes, brother. I know you see me. Don't try to be cute. But then the one I don't want to talk to me, and I don't mean like don't want to talk to me. You can say hi to me, but why you want to take me out? <laughs> you want to take me out? Well, you so brave, you know. But Sometimes it'd be like an insult, like, do you think that you really got a shot? With That's you? what I'm saying. Somebody Where give me a mirror. Where am I looking like today? Somebody look at me a mirror. Somebody, 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 somebody give me a mirror. Somebody give me a mirror. Love y'all was talking you know about. No, I look earlier. better than this. I, <laughs> I know I look more expensive than this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah, I'm playing. Y'all stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> oh God. So y'all see where I got them. <laughs> I'm just watching. I forget. I'm supposed to be moderating this. Yeah, so do your job. I'm enjoying myself. Listen, so, so in these dating streets, as you approach Valentine's Day, and I want to go down the road, do you feel lonely? Do you wish that you had your boo thing? Uh, tell me your feelings when approaching this holiday, starting with you, Jessica. Well, I'm a lover, so... I ain't, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I have self-love, but, like, one of my love languages is physical touch, you know, words of affirmation. So it's, my voice can go low, but it don't work for me. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard. You know, I, I, I look at me, I say, well, at least you're still beautiful. And... <laughs> Just, Talk to yourself, you know, sis. Talk to I, I yourself. Do. I, and then, and then, but what helps, what does help, I'm not going to lie to you. I know that I'm single because I don't settle. And, Talk. And, and that's, that's the, good. you know what I'm saying? If I wanted somebody, I can have somebody. But he wouldn't be my somebody. Mm. And I want my somebody. I want somebody that got my vibe. You know what I mean? Talk about it. Can match my fly. Like, has the, you know. And so I don't settle. And so I have to be honest. Like, I, it, it's hard sometimes. You know, Valentine's Day coming up. And where's the text, right? Uh, anybody gonna text me? I don't have, cause I don't. I'll text people. you, friend. Please, hey, text me, Samantha. We all gonna be on a group chat, okay? <laughs> group chat. That ain't the text you want. <laughs> it's really not. I want like, hey, you know. Um, <laughs> she wants so, that. Hey, big head. Hey, 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 big head. Me, right? I don't, you know, I want the text. You know, maybe ask me out on a date so I can blush because I'm awkward on dates, but I would love to like feel awkward. Like, don't you want to see that happen? Like, ask me out, you know? But no, it'd be the guy that shouldn't ask me out. So there's that. Kristen. <laughs> Once again, I got to follow that greatness. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're um, I think you can be alone and not be lonely. Talk about it. That's a word. Right um, there. I think that falls back to you asking us about self love and, and learning to love yourself and be alone with yourself so you can hear yourself think, so you can hear God a little clearer. Um, I think the pandemic taught me that a lot. Yeah. Sitting around for five, six months and can't go nowhere. In LA, we had curfews. So yeah. it was like 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock. It's like, damn, the sun's still up. I got to be in the house. Yeah. <laughs> can I say, damn, on here? <laughs> You might have to edit it out. <laughs> Dang, the sun's still up. 
but <laughs> it's authentic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Edit that. Just overdub that. But um, yeah, I, I I think that's the most one of the most valuable lessons I learned during the pandemic is that it's okay to be by yourself. Um, I did finish Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. Listen, I finished them show. all. Yes. Every show, every movie ever. But it's okay. <laughs> and, and now that I'm okay being by myself, I'm not going to be in a situation that disturbs my peace. Talk or, about it. Or poisons my peace. I don't care how, how, how great loving is. I don't care how beautiful somebody is or what their measurements are. I'd rather keep my peace and, and sleep Preach. on the whole bed, diagonal if I need to. Preach. Christian, uh, before we move to Lady J, I want you to explain why is peace so important? God, um, a couple reasons. One, I don't think anybody really checks on the, the stronger people that, that have to hold everything together for family members and friends and businesses and companies and everything. Two, I've spent enough years of my life not having it. So now that I, I'm aware of what it is and what it tastes like and what it feels like, I, I'm not living without that. That's um, good, that's a word. I don't need to be right all the time, I'm not. Like maybe half the time. Real talk. Like <laughs> yeah. like one out of yeah. every two. You know, I'm shooting decent from the field. But um, <laughs> it's it's priceless. And and the reason is, in my opinion, you gotta save a little bit of energy for yourself, and that energy is that peace. Yeah. It's that the ability to just just sit somewhere and, and be like, ah. Yes. And I think that comes with age. Because, you know, the older you get, you be like, I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? When, when you were younger, you, 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 you would entertain a toxic situationship or relationship or whatever. Penetration long, ship. Oh. <laughs> Pen it's, it's ships now. It's a lot of boats in the yard now. A, a penetration ship, location ship, situation ship. Yeah, location ship. Yeah, a location ship. If what does that mean? What's location ship? Let's say you and, and, and somebody, a brother was just working in, in, in uh, Nebraska where it ain't a whole oh, lot yeah. of options. Oh, yeah. So y'all just sell for each other. And y'all the only beautiful black people there? That's the location ship if y'all pop it off. <laughs> oh, and circumstance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Necessity. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Out of necessity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your GPS only go to his house and his only go to yours because right. they're the only black people gotcha. around. That's a location gotcha. ship. That's a location oh, ship. Jesus. What was the other ships you named? Uh, so association ship. Association ship. Friendship. We missed that one because some people are too free with that. Mm. All these people that, that you say aren't necessarily your friends. Some of them, you, not, you need to scoot them over into the associate Hold category. on, y'all yeah, 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 hold you for the step of some toes right there. It's okay. Okay. That's okay. That's uh, okay. Yeah, they... Good. Now, all these toes up here good. Um, and so it is. And so it is. But, um, and the penetration ship, that is just sex. 100%. Um, your communication ship within your relationship or your category, what that's like. So it's a bunch of ships. It's a lot of ships. That's good. You're going to write a book called The that's, Ship. No, it's literally, I'm, I'm almost done with it. It's, well, it's it called is. Defining Your Ship. Ooh. I like good. that. I like that. Oh, I like that a whole lot, Christian. That's dope. I'm Lady looking J. for the championship. Go ahead, okay. The championship. Okay. Talk championship. About it. You better say that. The All championship. That trophy. No. That's what she wants. She wants that, that ring. Is that the championship? Yes. Eventually. When when it's right, right? Because I've I mean, many of you know, but I have had the ring before. It was a short-lived marriage. Um, I wouldn't take it back. I learned a lot from it. So we can talk about that championship later. That was a championship. Then they found out I was, you know, they went came and took the ring back, you know. But <laughs> Um, so it has to be right. I'm, I, I don't think anybody should get married to get married. Because let me tell Talk you, when you get married, you you can't go back to your house when they get on your nerves. You can't. There's no separation ship. <laughs> but I'm going to go on to Valentine's question. One thing, I do want to say this, because I think that we don't give people their credit and their flowers. Um I don't know Christian. I don't hang out with Christian, but I have been in the vicinity with Christian. He and I did a play together years ago. Yep. Um, obviously, Christian is a very attractive man. And I'm going to just say this. In the play, Christian had to take his shirt off. And let me tell you, I said, well. Jesus. <laughs> he said, well, well. So when you're talking about attractive men like Gil and Christian, right, there are a lot of options. 
When you're in a play, there's women everywhere. And I remember meeting Christian for the first time. And, you know, my, my first thought is, okay, here comes this old pretty boy. He's going to be thinking, he, you know. <laughs> women were literally throwing themselves at Christian. He did not give me thirst vibes at all. When I tell you he was a gentleman, he was respectful, um, he carried himself well. He wasn't, he didn't come off with their parents. Y'all know, ladies, the, the gigolo type of guy that's like, oh, okay, she's gonna give me attention today and now I'm gonna move over here. And you know, we're to, like when you're in a play, everybody's together the entire time. So you, you do develop a level of friendship or associationship or whatever, right? So I do wanna say that about Christian. Um, and kudos to you, seriously, because you could be. And I'm not saying that behind closed doors. I can't speak on that. But I think it's very important that people know that you really, really, truly have always been a very stand-up guy. Man, when I tell you I'm about to get your DM so popping right now. <laughs> I am the best wingman. But seriously, you guys, like we have to celebrate our black men and we have to uplift them. 100%. Because, you know, had it been reversed, somebody would love to get up here and dog him out and talk about all the things and this and that, whatever. So I do, I do want to give you your credit with that. Um, when it comes to Valentine's Day, I'm going to be honest. I am not a typical girl when it comes to Valentine's Day. I've never been. Um, I don't like Valentine's Day. I never have. I guess because I've been in relationships before where you, the relationship wasn't... I don't want my relationship to be, I don't want to live for Valentine's Day. Yeah, no, right. I literally, my best relationships were the relationships that I was like, oh, it was Valentine's Day. I have also been in relationships where it's like, well, maybe I'm going to get a little attention because it's Valentine's Day. So I have just always felt, and I know it's so cliche, of course, every day can't be Valentine's Day, right? But there should be a level of love and respect and care and concern and communication and all of those beautiful things throughout the year that Valentine's Day for me should just be another day. So I don't, I don't really get hung up on Valentine's Day. Like to me, it's just another day. And of course, we've all been that girl before where we've either been at school or the office and like, here come all the flowers come in and you thinking, dang. My desk show is empty over here. <laughs> I've actually known women that have sent themselves stuff on Valentine's yep. Day, yep. which to each his own. Um, and that could be a level of them, you know. Self love. Self love. Self love. Yeah, but when you put a man's name on a car, girl, stop. <laughs> She's manifesting. Yeah. Man a fasting. Man a fasting. That's the name of your book. <laughs> man a fasting. So, yeah, for me, Valentine's Day is it, cool because, I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't want that to be my special day mm, mm. and vice versa. I don't want that man to feel like that's the day he looks forward to, too. I want him to look forward to coming home to me on the 17th, on the 21st, on the yeah. 22nd, on the 5th. You get what I'm saying? So I like, I'm, I'm good. And when it comes to that, love it, love it. Gil, Valentine's day. How do you feel? So what was the original question? Is it, is it? <laughs> yes, that's such a man question. Like, no, 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 can we take a moment for the I man heard, question? I heard that is what such you a man. Said, so wait, what? But was they the got question? into so much other stuff that they got me over here. You got spinning. your mind thinking about some other yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so as you approach Valentine's Day, how do you feel about that as a single man? Okay, got it. Easy. So for me, it's easy because um, it's been a long time since I've been in a relationship during Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna echo what Lady J said. For me, it's just another day. Um, I respect it. I understand that, you know, it's, it is a lot of people don't care about Valentine's Day because they think it's a commercial holiday, whatever. But sometimes it's needed. Sometimes some, some couples need it in their relationship to kind of remember, uh, help them remember that they need to bring that spark back into their relationship. So because, you know, some, some people can get complacent yeah. in a relationship. Even the best marriages, best relationships can get a little complacent. So you know, especially after the holidays, yeah. you know, all that spending, a lot of people stress out. So something like Valentine's can kind of like put that little pep in people's step to just, you know, do, do what they need to do or remind them of what they need to do. But it shouldn't be an in all be all either. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, it's just um, another day and just, and also, so 
I don't know, I mean, for people that know me, um, my dad passed away on Valentine's Day. Mm. So for me, it's like a little different. But I don't take, I don't use that in, as an excuse to not to celebrate it. It's just, I just look at it differently. That's good. That's good. And sorry to hear that, brother. Sorry. Sam, Valentine's Day. That was, that's hard for me to follow up. <laughs> that's how I feel like when I got to talk after her. Yes, I mean, your daddy. You know, it's all right. Talk your talk. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, like a lot of us, I like testosterone. I mean, I really do. I like, I enjoy it. I like it around me. I like the energy of it, vibe of it. So, yes, there's parts of me that obviously are reminded of the fact that, <clears throat> you know, you don't have that or that's not something that's happening for you in that moment. And it can be hard. on. I'm not going to say it's easy or it's, oh, yeah, it's just another day. Yeah. Every. But then and you have friends that will tell you, girl, I just got my first Valentine and he just made all these plans. I'm like, dang, it just remind. I think that was the first time I was reminded, like, dang, I ain't got no Valentine. Like, is there something wrong with me? And so then I started having to be intentional, kind of echoing off of Jessica was just like, that's because of the standards that I've set. I could have a Valentine, but that's all I wanted, right. you know? But I don't want just any Valentine. If I was gonna be a Valentine, and to echo Jay's point and Christian's point, it's like, do I really want, I want somebody that makes my life better. Amen. I don't want, you know. You make my day better. Like when I come in, like we have Valentine's Day. I've had Valentine's Day where it's like, dang, is it over yet? Yeah. Like your energy is so negative. Is it over yet? Or there's been, you know, Valentine's Day where I didn't even know it was Valentine's Day. So it's like to me, instead of making it about what other people can do for me, what am I going to do for me? Right. How am I going to celebrate me? On, how am I going to love me on this Valentine's Day? So I said, oh, I'm going to get my lashes done. I'm going to go get me some roses. I'm going to go do this and that, like the things that I like to do for me. Because I think that a lot of times we can get so caught up in what other people can do for us when we, not to say, you know, all, all ladies independent, throw your hands on that. No, I'm not trying to say that. What I am saying is, is that sometimes we get so caught, like, we have to be very, and this is a self-love event. We have to be very intentional, ladies. Because a lot of times we find our worth and validation in trying to be in a relationship. And some of y'all are holding on to relationships that don't serve you. They actually take things away from you. You'd actually be better off without it. But because society and different things around, the pressures that we face, it's like, what's wrong with you because you at X age and don't have Y? It's okay to not have Y at whatever age you are. If I would rather it be right than to hold on to something that ain't right is taken from you and you ain't got no peace. So I would just say, celebrate the things that you do have. Celebrate the things that you do have, because we're here. Y'all are beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Y'all healthy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what else you, ha you do have. I, I guess you have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you got a car. <laughs> Some type of transportation. Y'all eating. Y'all got families. But j just try to and be intentional if you don't have a Valentine. Love you the best way you know how to love you this Valentine's Day. That's a challenge for y'all. I don't know what you like. I don't know what you want some man to do for you. But if you want to go to your favorite restaurant, take yourself to your favorite restaurant. Yeah. Dress up. Look fine on them. Yeah. Be disrespectful. <laughs> that's Get yourself I, that's a massage. Yeah. That's good. Some, yeah. Get some exactly. new get some new batteries for your battery operated boyfriend. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, I mean we gonna be grown. editing grown, you yeah. out a lot, sir. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's grown. Am I lying? Self love, self pleasure, oh, go hand in hand. Can we get the next question? Uh, next question, Latanya. Next question. We, we, go ahead. Christian Key says self love, self pleasure, go hands in hand. They close. They cousins. They stay next to each other on the same street. <laughs> <laughs> That's your okay. gentleman, huh? So, so it's interesting. Um, when I even think about it, um, about Valentine's Day, I'm always intentionally talking about love and writing letters to my future wifey. So Valentine, it is different for me because it also shows the void that I yearn for. Uh, and because I'm so intentional about what I desire and what I want, it just hits differently. Like, I'm like, like even when I was writing the letter that I'm going to read at the end of this episode, I was like, that sounds real good, but I'm lonely. 
And, and there's moments where I'm lonely and there's moments that I'm alone. And so when I embrace those moments, I go, because I'm telling you, this whole week, planning for this event, um, and I'll tell y'all some other stuff that happened on Monday. Uh, well, I'll just say it here. Y'all be the first to hear it is that um, someone stepped up and purchased the land that I've been looking at. And um, I'm going to pay them back now. Don't clap too loud. I got to pay them back. It's like it's like, it's like on layaway or something. But, but they had bought the land for $1.35 million. Uh, and that closed on Monday. And so I'm seeing all this stuff that's happening. And, and I go, I wish I had my woman to share this with. Like, I really want to do this with my woman. I don't want to get so far in the process that, you know, these moments I wish I could share with that woman. Because I, I love the grind in a relationship. I love the build up in the relationship where y'all build something up together and go, look what we done. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Um, and so that's what I desire. And so when that happened on Monday and, I, and uh, every day, you know, God bless Armani. Or mine don't see me at home at all. You know what I'm saying? It's like I sleep in my office. Every day this week, I slept in my office. And then one of my homegirls said, you ain't going to be able to do that while you, when you get married. I said, I ain't going to want to do that when I get married. You know, I'm like, I, like, I ain't going hey. to be talking to you. I ain't going to be sleeping in my office when my good old wife with, oh, praise the Lord, anyway, <laughs> is at the focus, house. Focus, focus. Oh, my bad. I, I digress. My bad. I'm not going to sleep in the office, but what I'm on right now is this grind to provide for my boys, and, uh, and I know that they suffer a lot because I'm not there, you know, um, and that's just, that's just sometimes the, the good and bad with being a single parent, but when I think about it, I go, wow, if I, had a, if I had a wife, she'll be at home, we'll be trading off moments and stuff like that, and it gives a whole lot more balance uh, in my life. But when I look at Valentine's Day, it does remind me of my singleness. And because, like a lot of y'all said, every day will be Valentine's Day with me. Like, I am a romantic. I love love. I love the pursuit of love. I love, I love, I, that's why I write letters like I do, because I keep that at the forefront of my mind because I mishandled it in the past. And I said, this time, I'm going to be so intentional about it that she's going to say, I ain't never been loved more properly than being loved by the terrorists. Amen. And Come on. that's the goal. That's the mission. Yeah, that's great. And so Valentine's Day, it just, it just hits different for me. Um, so what are y'all going to do to celebrate Valentine's this year? You don't know? Just work. Chris <laughs> Keys, you on about 900 projects. Are you working on Valentine's? I don't know, actually, because um, sometimes <laughs> they'll change schedules. I'm blessed to be working on, recurring on five TV shows right now. Exactly. That's Did y'all hear that? Insane. Five TV shows right now. And I was asking, I said, Christian, how in the world are you able to memorize all these scripts going back and forth, these different sets or whatever? And that's that theater training. That theater training taught him all this and got him working like that. So if anybody needs some money, y'all know who to look for right there. He, he the one got the money. Yep, whoever bought that $1.35 million. <laughs> <laughs> we all going to call him up. <laughs> Jessica, what you going to do this Valentine? How you going to celebrate it? I'll be with my boys. You going to be with your boys? Yeah, so. Your first love. I love them. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she glowing? She glowing? What she yeah. talking about? I, got, I have wonderful children, and I've been, I've been away working. So for me, I, I put in what I want out, and so I want a lot out of my children, so I put in a lot for them. Um, not to say that, you know, Valentine's Day isn't a romantic holiday, but it's more so love. Now, I'm not going to keep all this love. I can give it to my boys. You yeah. know, it's not the romantic kind. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know the kind, you know, somebody here, a strong back, you know? <laughs> But <laughs> Jessica, why is it important for him to have a strong back? Above all things, a strong you want a strong all back. Things. I just need Above all a strong things, back. you want a strong back. First, I just need a strong back on I'm this gonna Valentine's be honest. Day. I'm not a little woman. Uh -huh, talk and about I don't want to feel fat with him. Like, I don't. Like, handle me. You know, I don't want to feel... I don't know what's going to happen with the weight. Sometimes I eat, sometimes it, it goes. <laughs> Like, if I catch you while I'm skinny, can you handle me when it happened, though? When it happened. When it happened. Like, are you good? Can you, let me see you bench press. Can you, can you handle that? That's just being honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
I, I mean, y'all could be into what you're into. You know, we all got different flavors, but for the girl, right? Let's see. Oh, Ain't nothing uh, like knowing you with a man. Like, I feel like a man has, there's an epitome of a man. Mm -hmm. There's a, a image of a man. There's a way that he walks. It, it's, you with him. Now, mind you, if we ever got in a scruffle, I'm the one who, you know, he ain't got to worry, but it feels good to know that I got options. That he would take over, you know, in the event. But it's really like, no, nah, babe, don't worry about it. He about to die, you know? <laughs> Saginaw, Saginaw in the house. Yeah, hey, Saginaw, Michigan. You from Saginaw? I am. I'm from Flint. They took that song. I love you already. I knew it. Stay away Better from me. not talk about me no more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a joke. No, I rock with you. I rock with you. I rock Thank with you. you. Okay. I rock with you. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now you can get you a skinny man. You know, one you can handle. You know, me, I want to be handled. So it's just, it's just a difference. I, again, I ain't no little woman. I'm going to diet, though. I got goals. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the way my jeans are set up. It's a big chance that we're going to be embarking upon that 170, 180 constantly, right? So that's just why it's important, Latir, is for his back to be nice and set. Nice and set, that's all. Can I say I wish I had her voice? Me too, that's what I was just saying. It's like, honey. I mean, I'm just picturing, I'm not a man, but I'm just like, you have some really great conversations with men on the phone. Because you'd be like, yes, honey. Oh my God. I can't do that. I'm gonna be like, what's she up? Has a great like, voice. Oh, she no. really does. But woo, every, Lord, Jesus. Every time I talk to her on the phone, I feel like my phone bill is going up. <laughs> like, yes. That's what it feel like in my spirit. So listen, um, so let me ask y'all one by one. Jessica, you wanna be married? Oh my goodness. Oh, the terrace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How's your back, Lutheris? How is your oh, back, Lutheris? How, how, how is your back set up? <laughs> how is your back? Listen, go on and do it. Hook them up, you been Christian. Doing your pull ups? You been doing your pull-ups? How much can your bitch press? Is your situation situated? <laughs> is your back I strong? Be, That's listen, what we want to know. I want to be married. I want to be partnered. I want to be companioned. I want to be like locked in. Because the way my mind works, I'm always thinking and I know what you need. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like I'm a solution to your problems. Girl. So, so I'm walking around here with all these solutions. Like I know how to fix all that. You, you've been worried for years, baby. You don't have to no more. I'm here. Talk I'm about here. it. She is good. Relax. Jessica got the game, Jessica, boy. You got, Jessica got the game. game. That's some real game. Like I, she got game. That's another level. That is another level. What oh you just God. said? I'm like, dang. You want to be married? <laughs> you looking for somebody? <laughs> I work out too. <laughs> <laughs> you got a strong baby. <laughs> she said you got a you got a problem. I'm a soul. <laughs> that was strong, sis. Wow. <laughs> Do you put that on your dating profile? <laughs> that was that was something right there. But Jessica, it's interesting because Jessica, she she says she's very awkward when a guy approaches her. She can talk all that good stuff, but a guy walk up to him and be like, "How you doing?" She goes, <laughs> and she just. <laughs> She just lose her mind. I don't, I don't understand what's wrong with her. What? It is. I always try to hook up with people. She, <laughs> no. And she just fold up and just melt and malfunction. What you, what's happening? I Seriously? shouldn't tell everybody that. I'm sorry. One second. Hey, what's going on? No, you will malfunction because hey, you sounded hey, so hey, wonderful. Hey, hey, hey. Just, what's you sounded, happening right now? You sounded Why are you talking about that? <laughs> He's snitching. He's snitching. No, here's the thing. Now, let me tell you, right? So y'all listening to me, let me tell you, right? I like to be myself. Now, I can pretend that I'm a professional dater. I don't date a lot. I'm excited. What happens is I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do it, though. That's a true emotion. I am very happy to be here. <laughs> I mean, now, now can I be dignified? I can swag it out. And I can, I can intimidate them, but who wants to do that? Now, that's not being grown. I want to be an adult. So I'll be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to pay for stuff, okay? I normally pay for it, but if you insist, I got alligator arms. <laughs> Christian, you yes. want to be married? You want to be married, Christian? Uh, 
Yes, I would love to. I was, uh, ooh, before Christian was born, I was engaged um, once and not pointing fingers, she got cold feet. Um, she sent me the ring back inside of my favorite jacket that I had given to her because I figured she would look better in it than me, cause, but she would always compliment me on it, so I gave mm. it to her. So, um, but that's as close as I've been. Um, I've been ring shopping. I would like to, yes. Um, I'd like to shoot the club up at least one more time, too. And, <laughs> and, and, I love and, when you say that. And, and, get, and get another, you know what I'm saying, another kid. Yeah. You know, my swimmer's still active, so, you know, I, I feel like I'm still a viable candidate. I'm Michael Phelps over here, so, I, you know, I want to I wanna contribute to being fruitful and filling the, <laughs> filling the earth. And multiply. So, listen, you mentioned something really deep. Gave the ring back. What did that do to your masculinity? What did that do to you as a man to go? Because this is a lot to get a man to get to that point where he says, you know, I give myself away, you know, and you say, I'm going to give myself to you. You're the woman that I chose. And then for her to unchoose you because she accepted it at one point and then she gives it back. What did that do to you? That, it hurt. It hurt. Um, and I let it hurt. Cause that was I knew that was the only way to, to get past it. Yes. It, like, it hurt like pull over on the expressway because you can't drive when you crying because Jagged Edge, I Gotta Be The One, is on the radio. <laughs> and I'm in pieces, bro. And I'm like, oh, that's it? And and I didn't regret it because I did right by the relationship. There like it I is. Was, I was turning down. Yes. If Can I be frank? Talk. I, I was turning down threesomes. I was. Yes. I, I behaved like she was around all the time. Talk about it. And it made me feel good as a man, so even though it stung and it hurt, and, and I wrote some of my best love songs ever after that breakup. <laughs> yeah. Ever. She has made me somewhat wealthy. I ain't rich yet. But um, it was necessary. And it, yes. and, it, and it taught me my value and my worth as a man, and it taught me how to love. It taught me to double down, don't give up. So yeah, I, I definitely want to get. You know, I love the fact that you said that. You said it taught you how to love as a man. Yeah. See, people don't understand that this whole process, this whole podcast was purposed and birthed out of pain. And when you get to the other side of it, you go through it, that's when you become whole, that's when you become healed, that's when you're able to offer your best self to the next person. And so for you to say that and you say, you know what, I welcome that pain. Um, that's what I do now. I don't, I don't get upset when things don't work the way that I want them to work out with whoever it is supposed to work out. I'll be like, hey, listen, when you truly believe that God has your back and God knows what's best for you, then you don't, you don't take rejection as rejection. You look at it as redirection. Just redirection. God, move me over here and keep on moving. Because the worst thing that could have happened, you could have got married and she gave you the ring back. Right. Why you were married for two years. Right. So it's like, you know, he mitigated that pain. And I and I pray for her. I hope she's happy. Um, but she wasn't my wife. Yeah. So I'm I'm okay with that. And you either get bitter or you get better. Talk and about I was it. like, let me heal, you know, and I want my person, like you said, like you said, I, I want my person. So you know, I feel like somebody's built God built somebody amazing for me. So, you know, I want that. I don't want something else. I don't want, you know, I don't want the person that's supposed to be with you, right? With Gil, I don't, I don't want her. She might be amazing. She might be fine in the mud, <laughs> but she ain't your person. She ain't for me. Yeah. Jade is one of my close friends, and Jade is so sweet, but she acts like a thug sometimes. Because yes, thug life. Say, yeah, over she, here. she acts so hard, but I've, I've cracked through that shell, and I see this beautiful, amazing, soft, tender woman. Do you want to be married, Jade? Yes, eventually. You've been saying eventually for, for a, a long time. I've been single for a long time. <laughs> I have been single. <laughs> okay. Um. And why do you always why do you always preface it with eventually? Of course, it's going to happen eventually. But why do you use that as a disclaimer? Mm. I'm afraid. I was wanting you to say it. Mm. I am. A, Honestly, like to the point of almost paralysis, I am afraid to love that way again and it not work out. Um, I am the person that he's right. 
I play tough all day long. I'm a tomboy. I'm the this, you know, I'm the I'm the guys girl. You know, I hang out with all the guys and I put everybody in friend zone. And when I really think about it, it's a defense mechanism because I'm so scared. That's good. Like I know when my guard comes down, I be talking like Jessica. Do you hear me? Like <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> Like, I love really, really hard. Like, I mean, almost uh, to a fault. And so the reality is, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not hurt over the relationship. The relationship was what it was, it happened. So it's not like I'm not still getting over him or anything like that. When you can't trust yourself. Talk about it. And, and I have gone to counseling therapy and, you know, my therapist has said, why do you take on so much of the blame for the relationship not working out? And for me, I say, why didn't I see? Yes. Like, what was I missing? Why didn't I pay attention to red flags? I'm not going to put everything on him. So, y'all, I'm, I'm never one. You'll never hear me bash any ex I've ever had, right? But what was it? that I blinded myself to. And so when you don't trust your own decision making, before my marriage, I felt like I was an amazing decision maker. I am, I'm a thinker. I think about how things can affect me down the line. I am analyzing, I am, you know, I'm trying to, like I really do try to process things, but when you literally fall in love, you get married and then you're like, wait, what? Then I start, I have questioned myself and like, <laughs> I have questioned myself in the area of love all of these years because I don't think I can take that pain again. Yeah. And so I always, eventually you're right, Lateris, and it, he calls me on this all the time. It is an excuse. Um, because what if I do meet my guy and I'm blocking him? And I don't want a man to have to tear down a wall for me. Like, that's not his responsibility, right? Talk so about it's it. like, I'm, I am working through, like, tearing this wall down on my own. And really, my wall is not bitterness. I'm not mad at men. I'm not like, I don't think all men are dogs. I don't put everybody in the same. My, my, my wall is pure fear, terror. Like, so. And that is the one area of my life that I haven't mastered. And of course you never master love, but it's like I've been pretty su successful in my career. You know what I mean? Like it's so many accomplishments I've had, but just that area for some reason, I just question a lot. And then you have the thoughts and opinions of everybody to say, oh, well you're too picky because of this, or oh, well this, and oh, well that. And I'm like, you have no idea who I am behind closed doors. Right. Like, I'm a very loving, loving, like, loving person. So, yes, I do want to be married again. I don't want to let this, um, my, my first marriage to destroy the possibility of me finding my guy and me having a love and I love, I'm still in it, Jessica, me being his problem solver and him being mine and we inspire each other and we grow together and we do all these amazing things together. I want children one day, you know, all of these things I want. But I have to like exhale and just let it happen. So yeah, cause I, I thought that I had found my one at one, one point in time and when that like went just haywire, I was just like, it has literally put me in a state of confusion. Yeah, it does. Uh, love is one of the most vulnerable places to be in because you have no control of the outcome. You can love somebody, like you hear that phrase, I love his dirty draws. Like you can love them, they can sit back and be like, I don't care. Or the way you're loving them, they say, I don't wanna be loved that way. And you're going, I'm giving you everything I got. And they like, and that's still not enough. Because that's why self-love is so important. Because if everybody does the work on self, then they're able to receive it from other people. 
That's the only way you're going to get there. And so that's the reason why I said I'm doing the work for as long as it takes to do the work until God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Here, I'm going to bless you with your purpose, partner. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to do the work. Gil, you want to be married again? Absolutely. I absolutely do. Um, mine was unorthodox, right? Um, I never thought I'd be married the way I was, but there was a moment right after the marriage where I didn't want to be married. I mean, I just, I didn't believe in it because of the fear of, you know, you putting everything to it and that person is just like, eh. And so, you know, going into something and not knowing how they truly feel, you know, that person, I just, uh, just being vulnerable with you. You know, you know, you know how you, you know how vulnerable you can be with somebody, but you don't know if they're truly being vulnerable with you. And they might have some walls up, and not everybody is willing to accept the fact that, you know, other people aren't here to tear down those walls. You know, my, and that was that was like a gem that you just said that most people don't realize that that's something they they need to work on themselves before they go into something. Because we all want somebody, but are you ready to be wanted by that somebody? Are you ready to be wanted by that somebody? That's good. That's good. So therapy has helped out a tremendous amount, and it's just kind of brought me back to who I was before the show and realized that, yeah, I still want it. I still, I, just like everybody here, I have lots of love to give. I know who I am. I know my value, and I know that um, I, can, I can make somebody's life even better. When you look at a lot of people look at you and they go, why would he even go on a show like that? He couldn't have had a problem finding a woman. Like, you find amazing women everywhere. What made you relinquish control of choosing your, your, your mate and give it in the hands of, quote unquote, these experts? What made you do that? For me, to be honest, it was something different. You know, um, I'd never watched the show before, so, I had to kind of go on Netflix and find a season and kind of get an idea of what it was about. Um, I'm thinking they, I'm thinking it was going to be more thorough with the you know match ma matchmaking process, and so I thought, okay, well if they got you know marriage counselor, sex therapist, you know sociologist, I'm thinking you know they they know their stuff. They're gonna get you the best of the best. Exactly. Yeah. You know something that I'm not used to going for because you know the thing is before that. You know, you meet people, we all, we all meet people and we think we're meeting the right person. We have a certain type, even though we might think we don't, and we just run into the wrong people. And we don't know why, but we're attracted to that. Right. And then we just keep falling short. And so I looked at it as, okay, these people are gonna see it, see it from the outside of the box. And probably they seeing, they're seeing something I'm not seeing. And it might work, but you know. How'd that work out for you, Gil? <laughs> I'm I'm uh, <laughs> practicing self love. Talk about. <laughs> we said a certain type. That's interesting. I used to. I didn't know I had a type, but I was I was attracted to broken women. It's like the more broken you were, the more attractive you were to me. And I realized it's because I needed to feel needed. And so. That hit me after I got healed, and I said, oh, I don't want no broken woman no more. <laughs> that mess hurt. You know, you because when you're trying to when you're trying to build a bear and you're trying to put put something together. Build a bear, that's day, a word right oh there for somebody's God. night. Build a bear. Man, I said, I don't like that because broken glass cuts. And I remember this one girl I was dealing with in my 20s, and every time, I mean, she would just freak out and just throw temper tantrums and stuff. And she'd been through a lot of lot of uh, lot of trauma. And I remember I would just grab her and I would hug her. And I would just hug and I would just start praying over her. I like, just calm down, calm down. Because she'd get mad and start throwing stuff. And I was like, what is wrong with this girl? she got a demon in her, you know? And I said, if I can cast this demon out, I'm like, oh, Jesus, we're going to pray right in now. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in yeah. the name of Jesus. Uh, in yeah. the name of Jesus. Man, when I tell you, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, because you start finding yourself changing. The more you start dealing with somebody, you'll find yourself, and then they bringing out the worst parts of you. And now I'm getting mad, now I'm angry, and I'm like, hold on now, we, well, I'm finna go to jail dealing with you. So I like my freedom too much, so let me just go ahead and free myself, like in vogue. 
and just free myself and get out of this relationship. I want to touch on that because I think as women, we are taught that we're supposed to be the down chick, right? Yeah, so ride it gets, or die. Yeah, it gets Until confusing. It can be confusing, right? Because you hear a lot of men say the phrase of, if you ain't like me when I was down, then I don't want you when I'm up or whatever. <laughs> um, or, or what we do because of, and, and men probably do it too, but if you have been attracted to broken people, I have also, what... We have, it's like there's a compassion and an empathy that right, we have. Right. And so we want to help them work through that, right? It's not always, we don't see it as fixing somebody. We take somebody's past into consideration. And so we give them what we're calling gra grace. We, we call, call it grace. It grace. Yeah. But we are literally playing God. Like we take on a level of a savior healing. complex. Yeah, that we should not be taking on. Like, if we truly love, and it took me a while to understand this, if we truly love someone, and I'm not saying if you're already married, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that, right? You're, you're committed. I'm saying if you're dating someone to a certain extent, you have to allow them to do the work for them. Yes. Sometimes we are doing the work for them. That's right. And then when we pull back, that person comes back out and we're like, oh, shoot, right? But it wasn't our, like, sometimes we got to ask God, is this really my assignment? Because when somebody is battling with something, even when you get married, I remember a therapist telling me at one point, if you get married, you're going to be dealing with this for the rest of your life. It'll get better, then it'll get back worse. Then it'll, are you willing to take that responsibility yeah. on, right? But I think that as women, I just want to put that out there, like, we try to be so ride or die and compassionate. And, and yes, to a certain level, we should. But also, there has to be a level of accountability. Right. And they have to see that they have an issue. Because sometimes we see the issue, and the other person don't even think they have an issue. They think you the issue. Right. <laughs> and you can't, you can't keep trying to fill somebody else up and mess around and end up on E. Yes. Doing so. There's a song, I forget the brother's name, super talented black singer, um... Amazing vocalist, but it says, uh, I want to save you, but I'm not God. Simple. Yes, I want to heal you, but that's not my job. Yeah. I want to pick you up high off the ground and lift you high. I want to save you, but I'm not God. It's beautiful. Look it up. But it's so powerful, and it, it addresses that. And it, every, you literally was speaking the lyrics, whether you meant to or not. I never heard the song. It's phenomenal. <laughs> when you listen to it, it's everything you just said, and it's beautiful, but it's potent. So if you ain't ready, if you might need to listen to it at home, because he might be talking about you as well as me. Mm. <laughs> hey, man. Sam. Uh, there's so many things I want to say, but yes, I, be I, definitely, I definitely want to be married, for sure. You said so many things you want to say. Unpack that. I think that there's a lot of times where we can think of a time where we were broken. Like, I know I've, I've been broken. And so, like, you want to have, you want to give grace, but we don't have the capacity or the ability to give grace. Only God can do that perfectly. And so I think that there's a part of me that empathizes with somebody that's been broken because I've been broken. There's a part of me that can empathize with somebody needing work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because I, because I've, I've needed work. And so, um, I think I can totally understand why a lot of us men and women try to really try to be patient with someone else's process because we yeah. know that we've gone through a process. We weren't always the versions of ourselves that we are on this stage and in this audience. And so we therefore allow people to have more access and more time and more patience because we know at one point we would have wanted somebody to do that for us. But I think that we also have to define our limitations, define what we are able to do, what we aren't, aren't able to do, and are they doing the work for themselves? That's the, that's the biggest thing. Are, are you doing it for you? Because I can't want it enough for you. And I think that that's the, the thing that you'll find in relationships, is that a lot of women, even the women that I know, beautiful women, accomplished women, doing well for themselves. But it's like, I had a friend that said something to me the other day. She's like, you know, the partners I keep cho choosing, they're so not they're so not on her level. And I don't mean to disparage anybody, but they're so not on her level. She's like, I realize I really am afraid of a relationship because of the men that I choose. I choose partners that I know can't give me what I want. Mm. So I sabotage me. Mm. Uh -oh. And so a lot of times, you know, we have to... 
in order for us, and, and it, going to your point, Jay, which I think I almost cried on your point because I've been, I've been wrong so many times. I think we all have been wrong so many times. But it's like the reality is, I think that we, we just can't, we can't trust people. We got to trust God. Got to trust God. That's good. And Sam, I'll say this. That is where I struggle. Not trusting <laughs> right. God. Right. I know my picker is off. So when I decided for my person, that was literally at a time. And I, don't get it twisted, y'all. I saw red flags, right? But I had a lot, of, gra did, I had a lot of grace and mercy, okay? Um, but I trusted God with all of me. I literally think spiritually I had never been on that level. Like I was, my vertical relationship was far beyond my relationship with him. And to still see it not work out. Like literally, you guys, I'm not even joking. I, I believe in the power of prayer. And I believe that there is nothing too big or too small for God. So I believed that if I believe that I if I believed with all of me and prayed hard enough that things would be fixed. I had to take accountability after the relationship fell apart and say to myself, but I really didn't ask him if that was my assign right right I, I, because I took on something I think that what God wanted was for me to allow him to heal. But I was already in love by then. And so I was sort of being driven by an emotion. And then I also want to be the person to be like, you know, when I choose my person, it's the agape love. It's unconditional love. So I'm going to love him through this. And I'm going to be honest, I got in the way of his process. Because sometimes when people love us, and, and they have us to blame because we're in the middle. God is trying to deal directly with this person. And here I am every single day showing up like, hey, you want some lunch? Hey, you want some? And think about it. That's why we don't like being alone a lot of times is because ain't nobody to blame. Mm, but that person in the mirror. That's you good. woke up unhappy this morning. Wasn't nobody there but you. You get what I'm saying? So it's, it's like I have to take that. That's what I'm saying, Sam. It's like I am like, girl, you know, I want God. I need you to sit on this couch next to me. And, and I need choose to, it for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I need you to drop them out the sky. Like, yeah. just let them show up and deliver something one day. And I'll be like, look at the, you. <laughs> it's you. Because I see a halo. So that's what that's what I'm afraid of. Did that's you ever, good. did you, real quick, did you ever... Pray and ask God specifically, hey, is this, is he for me? I've done that at certain points in my life, and, and you got to be ready for the answer, because he'll, he'll shake or destroy, yep. it, it'll fall clean on the bar. I booked stuff that didn't fit right in my spirit, and I was like, God, I really don't want to do this. I know, I, I love this check, but I don't want to do this. Um, Chocolate City 2. Uh, no shade. I just, I didn't want to do it. You know, I didn't want to, I'm, yeah. I'm a grown man. I don't want to play a stripper. <laughs> um, or an exotic dancer. I want to be respectful to the guys that actually do it. But, um, so I was like, if this isn't for me, if you have something else for me and this isn't what I should take, please do not let me have peace about this. I tossed and turned for days. Yeah. I had no peace whatsoever. I passed on it and then... Probably a week later, I I booked Saints and Sinners that went on to. to yes. Do you got to yes. ask him specifically if it's for you. Is this for me? And if not, show me. And be willing to walk and, away. And put your seatbelt on because he's going to show you and one way or the other. Be willing to walk away. Listen, man, I really enjoy talking, y'all. That's that's a that's a valid point. When you start praying and asking God, is it for you? Are you bold enough and trusting in God enough to allow it to disappear or for you to walk away? Uh, and a lot of us, you know, that takes a whole nother level of maturity and trust in God because we say we trust God. But if he takes the very thing that we think we want the most, then we think like a bratty kid and go, you don't know what's best for me. Uh, but listen, I enjoy talking to y'all. Uh, y'all give it up for this amazing panel, y'all. I really enjoyed it. Y'all thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Ladarian.
thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical context, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Dear future wifey, will you be my valentine? Not just for a day, but for a lifetime. Interlock your hand in mine as we dine on morsels of affirmations and catch feelings and flights, airlines. You are what I prayed for. We are aligned. God is loving me through you and is so divine. Meeting you is like stumbling upon a gold mine. You're a wealth of beauty, knowledge, class, sophistication, so anointed, and you're all mine. I asked for a sign that God hears my prayers and he sent me you. I thought it was out of the blue, but it was deja vu. Better yet, it was the water cycle. Let me break this down for you. My tears became evaporation when I tapped into the sun. 
When the tears cooled down, God held them in the clouds until you became the one. Precipitation occurred as you fell from heaven into my arms. I'm done. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.